Starburst, Satellite, Sputnik, whatever you call them. I love seeing those things. And this one is one of my favorites right here in Moriarty, New Mexico. We are on what is called the Revenge Road, the I-40 corridor that was once Route 66 between Santa Rosa, New Mexico and Albuquerque. The road that a former governor of New Mexico built to slice out Santa Fe right off of Route 66. Just because he was mad he didn't get reelected. It's the faster route home and I am now trying to get home as fast as possible but of course I had to stop and take a look at that. It's treacherous out here because it's about a billion degrees and also there are strange wild cats. Don't move. I don't think he can see us. If we, is he looking at us? Oh my gosh. Run for your life! Now I passed through Moriarty last year and filmed a couple of things, but one of the things I missed was this place. The Lewis Antique Auto and Toy Museum. I have no idea what to expect out of this place. It looks pretty awesome. Wow, this is one impressive collection. Wow, look at all these toys. It starts with those, and then I guess you graduate to these. Look at that, 1928, 35, 30, 27, 1915. It's amazing that one or two people are able to amass a collection like this. I was never much of a car guy. I mean, I appreciate the look of cars, but on this trip, I've tried to look more closely at the car museums and stuff. I've discovered there's so many more types of cars that I ever knew existed. Look at some of these gnarly survivor cars. Cars here all rusty and dirty still. The more places like this I go, the more these really become works of art to me. Whoa, man. Hey, look at that T-bird. Actually, there's a bunch of T-birds in here, all different kinds. Hey, who's this guy? Hidden Mickey. Ooh, Mickey's driving his kids to school. Oh, check out these old jukeboxes. I would love to have an old jukebox. I think this is some sort of antique car looking train or truck backs full of toy trucks. I swear every time I come to a place like this, I just want to own one of these things. Can you picture me going down the highway in some goggles in one of these trucks? That is one impressive collection in there. Okay, that is wild, but if you think the inside is crazy, how about the outside? Look at all of these cars. When I was inside, I was just asking Mr. Lewis, how did you put a collection together this huge? And he said, well, he's been fooling with him since he was nine years old, and that was 70 years ago. Then I asked him how many Model Ts he had. Just Model Ts, and he said, I've never counted them. There's probably at least 50 out there. At least 50? He laughed and told me I could count them if I wanted to. Well, looking at the pile out here, I don't think I want that job. Say, I know what's wrong with this one. They're missing the Spacely Sprocket maneuver. They need to inhibit that with the contributor and they'll be they'll be good to go. You know what's nuts about the really old ones is look at the wheels. So many of these cars are so old they have wooden wheels. Like talk about antique. That is just crazy to me. I don't know how early that would make these cars, but I see at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, at least ten of them with wooden wheels out here. Now you might think it looks like a waste to see all these cars sitting out here, but I never look at it that way. People like Mr. Lewis in there are the only reason that a lot of these old cars survive survived is that they gathered them up when they became rust buckets, they'd find them on people's farm, tow them to yards like this. I would say the whole antique auto industry and culture really survives because of guys like this and yards like this. Dude, it's endless. There's acres of cars out here. I love the old trucks. You never see people restoring these or driving these around. I mean, they're almost like concept cars. They're so funky looking. It's hard to believe those were all over the road. There's some beautiful old pickup trucks out here. What's great about the desert cars is they don't rot. They get the sun rust on them, but they survive. Look at the paint job on that still. That's amazing looking. Well, I think I found the motor department. Look at all these little cars over here. There's a ton of little miniature cars. I could be wrong, but I think these are Crosley cars. You know those people that make the little suitcase, turntable, radio things? Well, at one time, they used to make little miniature alley-sized cars, and there's a whole bunch of them out here. Yep, there it is right there. Crosley. Man, looking at this, it makes me wish that I was a more mechanical person. Taking something like one of the cars in this yard and completely restoring it, completely doing it over, would be such a rad feeling. Must be pretty fulfilling feeling to take something like this old Mercury and get it running again. But that also must take quite a lot 
of work. Look at this, some of these cars, the frames of them look almost more like old wagons or carriages, which makes sense. I mean, when you think about it, that's what they were at first, horseless carriages. They just put a motor on what they already had. Oh, I love all the bullet nose cars. There's old Studebakers or like this old Ford here that have the weird circular bullet looking thing right in the grill. This door panels, window frames. How did he get this many pieces of automobiles? Wheeling and dealing. I have only walked through maybe a quarter of the property and just Look at all this stuff. So many wooden rimmed or wooden spoked. There we go. Wooden spoked wheels. Ooh, I love seeing the old paint jobs. That's crazy. Some of them are layered. You can tell they were one color and then got repainted another. Then they're out here in the desert, slowly having the layers revealed. Oh, there's a rad 60s T-Bird right there. I'm really into more of the 60s and down. After you get to the 70s and you get to the big boat cars, I start to lose interest. Something about the 1930s to the 1960s just had so much style and flair to automobiles. It's crazy because when you see new cars now, all the companies are copying each other. And I mean, they always have put out similar models. But when you see all these older cars from different manufacturers collected in one place, you really start to see there was a lot of variation in size and shape and design. That is pretty darn cool. Man, they've got everything out here. Look, here's a yard of old trucks and there's some newer trucks, even some semi-trucks. Did I just say semi-trucks? I meant semi-trucks. This little piece right here, that's a semi-truck. Feels a little bit like walking through a graveyard out here. I was kind of just thinking about all the hours someone would have had to spend in these trucks driving down the highways. And now, here they sit, awaiting what future? Who can say? Look at all these trucks carrying other trucks. This place is wild. There's layer after layer of vehicles. Vehicles on vehicles, vehicles in vehicles. Look at this, you could just walk right in to rows of old tow trucks and repair trucks. I mean, these are some industrial strength stuff out here. I mean, this one block of vehicles is parked bumper to bumper, seven trucks deep. It's amazing, it's like back in the day there was an old truck dealership and everybody just walked away for 70 years. I don't even have enough words for this place. Look at this old truck right here, Valley Vacuum Service, it says right up there. The Valley Vacuum Service truck. Wonder how long it's been since a repairman showed up in that thing, huh? Wild. It's funny when you spend enough time in a place like this, you start to see a method to the madness. There's a weird sort of organization to a place. All right, here's a question for my car people out there. All over the country you see yards like this with old cars, sort of bumper to bumper, packed out there in the junkyard. Some are missing wheels, some are missing hoods, glass certainly. I know these things all depend on the circumstances, but just for as a for instance, what would it cost to take an old roached out car like this? Something from one of these yards that still sorta has the seeds and sorta has a motor that's not working, kinda rusty, kinda crusty. What would it cost a person who just really wanted to see that car run, for example? And I'm not saying, you know, trophy winning quality, just to get it running, get it sort of functional again. What are we talking about? 10 grand, five grand, 20 grand. What's the, what's the price range? This is a weird, truck over here it's very painted a lot of layers sorry the paint job on this was distracting me from my question i was just wondering because i watch shows like american pickers you know and they'll pick up something that just looks like garbage and then they spend a little money and they have these things that look like they belong in a junkyard running again it's pretty amazing i wonder what this costs like i wonder what just a rusted out old hulk of a car like that costs normally i'd be much more hyper running around a giant yard of abandoned it looking vehicles by myself but there is one heck of a heat wave going on that summer sun is brutal today even i'm getting a sunburn right around the neckline and i don't burn look i just get dark look there's my my other color i like how trucks went from all round like that to just totally square for a while now how can we make our truck stand out and look different i know eh, eh. It, it, done. They look so much more unfriendly like that. Like that just looks like it's gonna hit you. Well, I completed a loop around the outskirts of the pile at this property. I only went into one or two little lanes of cars and trucks. It would take you an unfathomable amount of time to look detailedly and closely at every single one of these motor cars. This is pretty cool and definitely worth doing. For a simple $4 donation, you can wander through history. The Lewis Automobile and Toy Museum, Moriarty, New Mexico. It gets my gold star thumbs up, happy face sticker seal of approval, that's for sure. It's just so awesome that there's a little bit of everything. A lot of trucks, which you don't see a lot of those, 
in other car museums and places. There's some Edsels out here, those Crosleys. Beautiful old Ford Fairlane. Dodge, Chrysler, Nash. I was just gonna say I hadn't seen any Studebakers. And then I saw a Studebaker. Man, you see people's sorta of private junkyards on the side of the road from time to time. Look at that, what does that say? Shuff? Shuff? Rain badger, chef badger. Anyway, you see yards like this, junkyards and whatnot, and you're never allowed to walk around in them. So I think it's pretty cool that they've opened this place up to the public. You can leave a little donation in there, pet their dogs, and then have a wander. Hey, look, it's an old Willys. That's a car company. They made the original Jeep. By the way, did you know that nobody officially knows why a Jeep is called a Jeep? True story. There are a lot of competing theories and a lot of people who will argue to the death that they know for sure, but the truth is, Nobody knows. Also on the back of Levi's jeans, those arculets, those little V-shaped things, nobody knows what those originally stood for, what the significance was. They know there was a significance, but Levi's headquarters burned down in the great San Francisco earthquake fires. And all their old archives were burned, and by the time anyone thought, gee, we should go digging around and find out what these arculets are all about, there was nothing left to tell the tale. All right, this was awesome, but I think I've looked at as many old cars as I can look at before going crazy because I don't have one. If you ever get the chance, I highly recommend coming out here and taking a look at some of the weirdness. All right, back to the highway. I am really looking forward to being home with my family, believe me. So now it's time to get out of New Mexico and burn our way across this desert. Oh, hello, Albuquerque. And goodbye, Albuquerque. It is about 10 times faster to take the interstate than taking old Route 66, but I gotta say, it's much less romantic. All right, we've made it back to the high point, back to the Continental Divide, the highest elevation on Route 66. And the point where rainwater west of here flows to the Pacific, rainwater to the east flows to the Atlantic, or the Gulf of Mexico. I had to pull over and stretch my legs before the one final push to Arizona. It's weird because in one way I was just here, but actually that was weeks ago. I'm gonna miss all these roadside attractions and trading posts and truck stops and signs like this. I love hand-painted signs and I love the highway, although it will be a relief not to have to say Route 66 500 times a day. All right, the wind is starting to get really fierce. I guess it's time to get back in the car and make my final push out of New Mexico. People like to ask me what I listen to on these road trips, and the truth is, I don't really listen to music. For example, right now I have been listening to part of a 44 hour long audiobook on the life of Abraham Lincoln. Wedding ceremony. The Reverend Jesse Head arrived on his gray mare. He was Pretty good stuff. This particular audiobook is so long, I'm actually not sure that I'm going to finish it before I get to California, but that's okay. Ooh, speaking of getting back to California, here's one tremendous step in the right direction. We've just crossed back into Arizona! Oh, thank goodness. I gotta tell you guys, I'm getting so sleepy, I'm tempted to stay in a teepee. It's making me so tired just looking at these cozy wigwams. Yeah. Wigwam. Oh, snap out of it. You must keep going. Must resist fun wigwam motel. I've stayed here before, and I'll stay here again, too. I'm sleepy, but not enough for a teepee. In fact, I only stopped because I had to go pee-pee. And now that that's done, it's time to keep going. All right, so I'm not stopping, and clearly I'm on a mission to get home, so you're probably asking yourself, Justin, where is the end of this video? Here it is, guys. Here it is. I love doing that. Feel better.